everyone, Jim Branscombe here for the Cinematic Void Vlog. This episode is going to be recapping shows I hosted back in October as well as November. I haven't done one of these since Beyond Fest, and I've done what I think are some pretty cool events since. And I'll start in October where I kick things off for spooky season with a little movie that you may or may not have heard of. Maybe you probably haven't heard of, but if you're in the cult film realm, you've probably definitely heard of Spookies. I actually had a pretty pristine 35 millimeter print of it flown in from North Carolina and if you haven't seen it it's actually like literally two different movies smashed into one like they shot a movie and then they took parts of another movie and then like production ended and they restarted and they recast so it's it's a pretty wild movie it's somewhere in between like a haunted house movie meets ghoulies or something like that there's like definitely some fart and ghost in there but it played really well with the crowd, but beforehand, I actually showed two short films, one of which was called The Island of Resuscitated Dead, where the filmmaker actually showed up all the way from Italy to introduce it. This short is a homage to the cinema of the Italian genre, and in particular, the zombie movies of the Italian years 70 and 80. In there, there's a little bit of everything. There's the best, e il peggio, da Lucio Pulci fino a Bruno Manfredi. So with this uh, short movie, I wanted to give like a sort of shout out to the Italian genre of cinema and uh, like zombie movies. And uh, you're gonna see like a mix of the best and the worst uh, horror movies starting like from Lucio Fulci to Bruno Mattei. It's just like a, you know, like a mix of all the most like peculiar stuff, like splatter, heavy irony, uh, exoticism, eroticism, and that, all that kind of good stuff. Along with that film, I showed another short film from the band Wolfman of Mars called The Flypaper Spectacular, which is kind of modeled off a of a Halloween special you would see on TV in like the 70s or the 80s. If you haven't heard of Wolfman from Mars, really kick-ass band. They scored movies such as um, Satanic Panic. And I don't know, if you like electronic kind of 70s rock vibe, like horror soundtrack stuff, definitely check them out. For my other show I did in October, I had the absolute privilege of presenting the world premiere of Severn Films 4K restoration of The Changeling. If you've never seen The Changeling, it is probably one of the best haunted house ghost movies ever made. In fact, I would go as far as to say that it's one of the best 80s horror movies ever made. Uh, not only did I get the premiere of the new 4K, Severn Films was on hand selling copies of their new Ultra HD 4K Blu-ray CD combo pack. And as an added bonus, I had director Peter Medic and producer Joel B. Michaels in the house for a Q&A after the film. So Peter really is, is uh, to be credited with the, 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 I think, still holds up the magnificent look of the film and, and introduced another character into the film that's not a living character, but it was the point of view, it was the, the camera, which was, became, became really another character in the film that, that Peter really invented. Uh, um, yeah, it's so easy yeah. to manipulate uh, the views of the film, you know, and it's it's so important to do it not with just tremendous noises and things blowing up and falling through the window and stuff like that, um, um, but but to 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 to, to scare people while you set up a suspense. And how you pay it off. It's just the same with comedy, it's, you know, how you plant a joke and then the joke comes and things explode. Speaking of Severn Films, November brought on the third edition of their Super Shock Pop Up Film Festival. Now, I've co hosted all three. We started the Egyptian. Last year, we did one at the kind of a hybrid drive in by, by the Cine Lounge that was actually the parking lot next to the Egyptian, but this year we went to Brain Dead Cinemas off of Fairfax, and Severn premiered two movies that they ended up announcing, well that was the announcement for their Black Friday sale that just passed. Good evening, how's everyone doing tonight? No, 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 you're about to watch 
two insane fucking movies that you have no idea what you're about to see. How the fuck are you doing tonight? That's much, much better. My name is Jim Branscom from Cinematic Boy, and here is my esteemed colleague, David Gregory for Severed Films, and this is volume three of the Severed Films Super Shock Pop-Up Film Festival. Yeah! So, we got some movies I'm gonna let David talk about. Okay, it's, first of all, it's very nice to be back here in this cinema. Uh, we, we spent quite a lot of time here with Bodemic. Um, that is not a clue to what one of the films is tonight, by the way. It's Bodemic 4, oh, sorry. Yeah, um, and, um, but the, a bunch of the Severin people are here at the back, so I want to thank all of them for being so dedicated to what we do. And we have two absolute scorches for you tonight. The first mystery film unveiled was Action Mutante, and then the second one was Dario Argento's Four Flies on Grey Velvet. This is the first pristine release of this film. It's been kind of in a weird limbo for many years, and Severn Films knocked it out the park with not only the restoration, but their upcoming Ultra HD Blu-ray CD combo pack, which if you didn't grab it during their Black Friday sale, you fucked up. Back in the Lost Fields 3, I got the absolute honor to host a special retrospective on director Jonathan Kaplan under the series title, The 70s Cinema, Jonathan Kaplan. If you don't know who Jonathan Kaplan is, he made all kinds of movies. Started in the 70s working for Roger Corman, and then he later on went to TV. He was a director-producer on the hit show ER, which of a certain age you probably definitely heard of. And he's just one of my favorite filmmakers. In fact, I had... In this series, I got to show two of not only my favorite films he directed, but just two of my favorite films just in general all the time. And the first of which was Truck Turner. If you've never seen Truck Turner, it is one of the great black exploitation movies ever made. It stars and is scored by the great late Isaac Hayes. Jonathan came out and did a Q&A and talked a little bit how this movie came together. I wanted to ask you about like how you... Um because this movie is very funny, it's very action-packed. Like, when you read the script, what was your approach to directing it? Because there's a lot of, like, it just feels very natural, but, like, also very, like, you know, just, it just kind of goes with the flow of everything. Did you just kind of read the script and kind of know how you wanted to, like, tackle each scene? But I know what I didn't want to do. And the thing was, uh, it, basically, if it hadn't been Ike, if, if you know, I, I learned the lesson on that movie that, if the movie star and you are in agreement, you could pretty much get away with most things. Mm -hmm. And when we talked about the script, he said, because basically the script had him, when he first uh, picks up Annie, and he says, you know, we're gonna get, get you something to eat or whatever. The, that scene was written as basically, he gets her home and she's furious at him and furious at how the place looks and says, you know, you didn't even have the courtesy to do the dishes, and he takes out his gun and shoots the dishes and says, the fucking dishes are done. And, and then he basically rapes her and just throws her down on the, on the sofa. And I said, I'm not doing that, man. There's no fucking way I'm doing that. And, you know, I'm a lover. I'm not, and I said, yeah, yeah, no, we're not doing that. We're definitely not doing that. And the whole, so we basically just reworked the whole relationship. With Anna said, Chase, look, the actress just reworked that relationship and made it, you know, what it became, which was warm and tender and complicated and, you know, and uh, AIP wasn't happy about it, but they couldn't do anything about it because that's what I wanted. <laughs> so, yeah. And, and the one thing that I felt bad about was, I said, I don't, do we really have to kill Uhuru from Star Trek? We gotta kill her. <laughs> you know, I mean, and, but, but when, when, she she wanted she basically said yeah yeah. <laughs> okay. I mean if she was that way on the Enterprise, I think they'd been a whole other station. There. <laughs> on the second night of this tribute, Jonathan Kaplan returned this time with screenwriter Dan Oppershaw as I presented the student teachers. Now I forgot to mention both student teachers and Truck Turner were brand new pristine prints restruck by producer John Davison, who worked for Roger Gorman for many years. He produced Joe Dante's Prana and went on to produce things like Robocop. So John has a whole collection at the Academy of these kind of prints and Truck Turner and student teachers had never played in front of an audience in a movie theater until these screenings. 
It was a real treat to have Jonathan return for a second Q&A along with Dan as they talked about not only making the student teachers, but working with Roger Corman in general. There's something about the way Roger just figured out how to market these movies, because he basically made money on pretty much everything during the New World yeah. era, yeah. outside of Cop Player. But Roger, direct, by the time I met Roger, he had directed over 75 movies. And he, you know, he took me out to lunch and said, you know, he, he basically, he said, I just want to make sure, just go over some stuff. He taught me how to, how to prep. He showed me, you know, how he does, how he preps with sort of a bird's eye view. And he said, he said, he said, a lot of you young people, a lot of you, you know, the amount of film students that I've worked with, they're, they're, they're very worried about where to put the camera. He said, but first you have to know where to put the people. And that's exactly right, you know, and then, he, he, he showed me how he how he preps, which was incredible, and you know, but his shorthand was and, and whatever. And we were sitting in a restaurant, and he said, "So if you were going to shoot this conversation between the two of us, how how would you do it? And where would you where would you put the people? Where would you put us?" So I told him, and he said, "Well, no, actually, if you if I sit here and you sit there and you put the camera there, then you have the whole room behind us, and it's much it's much more depth." And Roger was so much more interested in the visual than anything else. And, uh, you know, he, he was completely unpretentious and completely self-effacing. But, you know, he, he was a visual, visual stylist and he knew what the hell he was talking about. For the third and final night of this Jonathan Kaplan tribute, the director returned once again, this time bringing along screenwriter Tim Hunter and star Pamela Ludwig for, again, one of my all-time favorite movies, not only directed by Jonathan Kaplan, but just in general, which is Over the Edge, which is, if you've never seen it, it's been basically referenced by everyone from Nirvana, the band Nation Ulysses did a song about one of the big lines of dialogue from the film, kid that tells on another kid is a dead kid, plus like there's countless punk records that sample this and just, you know, people like Rich Linklater were inspired by this film to make Dazed and Confused. It is, again, one of the best fucking movies ever made. If you haven't seen it, Aero Video put it out on Blu-ray earlier this year. It might say it's a UK release, but it is definitely all region, so you can play it on your Blu-ray player. The screening was absolutely sold out and after the film we had Jonathan, Tim, and Pamela Join us on stage to do a QA. and a The most, one of the most memorable lines in the film, which I have built says twice, is it depends on another kid in the dead end. Where did that come from? We wrote it. <laughs> <laughs> um, I remember we were, uh, Jonathan, we were, Jonathan was shooting the big finale, and then really at the, at the school, you know, for about a week. Yeah, but we started, I started to, and we wanted to shoot that first so the kids would have all had experienced it, which was, it worked, it definitely worked, but it was, a, it was ultimately like, because it was nights, it was like seven nights or five nights, and everyone was just, from then on, just trash. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and Charlie and I were there, and you know, as you directed it, you needed stuff to fill the space, and he was constantly saying, write more dialogue, I need lines here, I need some stuff for them here, so there's a lot of voiceover dialogue that we wrote right there on the, on the spot. Those teachers and stuff. Those kids were so stoned. <laughs> <laughs> and Charlie and I would chaperone them up to Greeley on the bus and the bongs came out literally. <laughs> <laughs> we wouldn't want to be a chaperone on this bus. <laughs> one of the things I love about this movie, but maybe one of those underrated aspects is your father's score balanced out with the I guess the pop and rock songs. And since Pamela is the it was all organic because we would ride to the set every day in the minivan and it was just this long ride, sure. yeah, schlep, you know, and the minivan was a really ugly area and we were all, you know, teenagers getting up at like five in the morning and so I brought my big boom box and I would just blast the music that I liked. That wraps up this recap of all the events I host in October and November. Thanks for watching. Until next time, see you in the void. Cops! Cops, man, you better get in the bush, yeah!